Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to the Fagan Miller podcast. The show I never thought you'd speak about sport and business on the same podcast. So again, ladies and gentlemen, tonight in studio, it's me, me, and me. And to my left, the most frequently asked question of the week was, Fagan, who are you looking to to the left? So, uh, Mr. Hopley, that's Mr. Nantel Hopley, a.k.a. Mr. DJ Madfingers. He is to my left. Um, did you pop yourself on the screen? And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, that is the man who runs Cape Conscious Media from his home in a beautiful studio. And um, yeah, so again, this evening, it's me, it's me, the D-O-double-G. I'm taking it very fresh this evening. And the reason for it being me is because it's going to be extremely compelling this evening. We're going to give value. Um, thank you for all the feedback first. I have to get into that, like massive feedback um, from the folks. What I found out is we don't comment, eh? Please, man, you get me in the road or you WhatsApp me. Fagan, I potent, your Fagan value. Like really the, the, the feedback was amazing. Like, no, no, I have never, it's good. Like, you know, that, that pat on the back, that mm, it works. And then also you get the, the criticism was brilliant. You know, um, I think one criticism was uh, you were reading, you were alone, where's your, your peeps there? And again, I I'd go back and explain the reason I, I'm doing the first few probably uh, on my own is to show you who I am. Because I can be here and having a whole lot of guests on and getting a lot of them. But the show is called The Fagan Miller Podcast because the experiences that I've been through and the knowledge that I've gained and the situationships that I have put myself in and through is very important to grow the next person. So ladies and gentlemen, this evening, a life and leadership session on how to grow your professional self. Now, what I've found is I am a master communicator, Defs. I, so what is the definition of a communicator? Taking something extremely difficult and making it very easy, even for the layman to understand. I feel that teachers take something, oh, God, let me not go there, but I do feel sometimes they take things that are very difficult um, and they make something very easy and they make it very difficult. So I prefer communicating. Communicating, I always focus on sender, receiver. If I send a message, how is the person receiving it? As they receive it, I adjust my message to the appropriate. So as we go along in the Fagan Miller podcast, I'm finding my target audience. I have them in my mind, but yet the feedback was like, oh, like I had school kids, high school kids reaching out to me. A lot of my kids that I taught, kids that are still on high school and things that they needed to hear. And then there was football friends, sports friends, businessmen, um, random people in the road in Musenberg, which was actually the few best conversations I've had. And just saying like, yo, brah, that's value. Like we need to hear more value because we don't do the, um, like I obviously was giving out, like go check out Simon Sinek on the internet. So someone in the week is like, nah, I don't like how Simon Sinek said it. I like how you said it. It makes more sense because something like the infinite game, that's something by Simon Sinek, like it doesn't make sense if he explains it. It does make sense, but contextually in South Africa, you must know everything is very, very different to the pound or the dollar. So again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. And uh, you know some good segments this week. We always have the tip of the week. Uh, I will give you an anecdote from the field. An anecdote is not an antidote. An anecdote is actually one of my top five grabbers. I'll explain to you one day what is grabbers. My students would know that because that's how I teach English. You always open up with the grabber. An anecdote is a personal experience from the field. And then uh, some behind the scenes of my life. And then a Q&A that I've had in the week with a coach. Just a good question I like to ask. And then obviously, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we got our book or docky review. I'll be reading again this evening from uh, Raising Positive Kids in a Negative World by Zig Ziglar. I'm also going to touch on something I shared earlier from this book. Dun, 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 dun. Potent. Oh! It's called Don't Be Sad. Pauses for dramatic effect. Ladies and gentlemen, it was, I come from training, by the way. So yeah, you're thinking like, why is it but I'm not on a Friday? Like, I'm just going to fill the slots, content building time. And we'll talk the end of the year about, you know, going uh, up against Joe Rogan and PBD. Let me first build the content. 
So uh, I come straight from soccer training, and after the f- training, uh, the coach, uh, Sean Jicks Oliver, uh, I call him the Paul Scholes of uh, South Africa, because he's one of the people that probably gets mentioned in a lot of cloakrooms all over the country. Very humble guy, you probably won't like me saying this. Anyway, Jiga, after training, would always put everybody in the poles. Now I'm like, you're like, there's some old school things that are just like beautiful, man. So you would pop everybody into, so there we go, the students are live, and I've got a parent potent. Fabian Olifant was actually on the, the podcast, loving the, and Nantel can bring me across again. Love Nantel, the professionalism, coming to pull you by your seat to sit properly. Um, and then Noah, that's definitely Noah and Aaron Potent. Uh, I think they it's definitely saying Potent because that's, I have frequently said words that come out. So back to this book. So anyway, Coach Jiga says, right, I'm on Nepal. I love it. So we all sit in the polls. And then he gives like, you know, that that last minute re-edition before the game on Saturday. Um, and he shared some things. Oh, do you? Yeah, I'm sure I can see. Yeah, yeah. Just, it was okay. Two things he shared was like, don't be angry when you play and um, don't be negative. But they're two words. So me being me, I'm like, coach, I have something to add. Um, and I said, coach, we always use that words. And I said, I've been reading this book. This is a Muslim self-help book. I'm going to read the, the back cover. It says, at a time in which Muslims are beset with trials from every periphery and within uh, comes the heartening book rooted in the commandments of Allah, uh, the Son, uh, you know, and the excellent guidance and examples of the Muslims that have come before us. And the book says, Don't Be Sad is an absolute must read for all people. It is a practical advice on how to replace it with a pragmatic and untime, ultimately satisfying Islamic outlook on life. It exposes the modern reader to how Islam teaches us to deal with the tests and tribulations of this world. So take heart and hold firmly onto the rope of Allah. So for me, like I think I'm halfway through now. And then I stopped because like the author's empowering me. And I, this is what I shared with the team. I was like, so I felt in here. I was Kim. Um, yeah, so I shared this with the team and like the skipper, Dicky, shout out to Dicky, uh, Keenan Dixon, what a guy. Uh, yeah, he was like, for again, no nah, man, goosebumps my bro, man. And I was like, yo, and it was, all I said was, the book I'm reading is called Don't Be Sad. So let's leave the word angry out and let's leave the word negative out. Let's just all, and I'm sharing it with, with, with the periphery, with everybody out there, the millions and millions, don't be sad as we move, because that was a tangent. And we're back. So this evening was about value and life and leadership on building your professional self. Because ladies and gentlemen, if you don't understand that you are a professional in everything, then I always say most levels, man, that's one of my favorite stickers now I send to the men's, levels. Like you have to keep your standards high. Like unfortunately, I always say unfortunately my standards is high. So, and not high in terms of um, material things, but in terms of value. Like bring value, man. Not price. Value. So ladies and gentlemen, this evening I'm going to take you through something that changed the way and outlook I see everything. John C. Maxwell, the 15 invaluable laws of growth. Now, our people, we, we don't get personal development. Nantel, do you remember when the Tony Robbins stuff used to come on TV? It used to be 350 for the the cassette tape. Is that the guy with the big teeth? Yes, Tony Robbins, big teeth. Tony Robbins used to come on TV. Um, There was somebody else or something. But it was this buy the self-help tapes. I'm just checking... Serious, do you seriously think people's gonna buy your tapes and then they must listen to you talk quite about yourself and then they grow? Oh, how naive. If only. And that's probably about seven, eight years old sitting in the TV in Hanover Park just watching this promos the whole time in the afternoon, um, you know, in the school holidays and so forth. And now, like Tony Robbins, bruh, like one of the biggest personal developers in the world, but where did he stem from? You know, the likes of Zig Ziglar. And, and they kept us all the stuff from our people during apartheid. And those who got it, you know who got it. And you, you know why? Because they apply potent leadership principles. And we can speak about our leadership, like yo, our ca- country's leadership is like to the shits. Like it's bad because they don't know how to lead. 
So let's, I'm not even saying let's, before even the 15 invaluable laws of growth, like we need to understand the leadership pyramid, or at least I'm going to start there, five levels of leadership at least. So again, one, and the worst one is a positional leader. So that's when you function because you have a title. Now, unfortunately, some industries function on positional leadership, and that's just how it is. For example, the army, um, the police, uh, because you have to respect the rank. Don't respect the person, respect the rank. Boop, quote, shawl, Krieger, the fireman. And, uh, and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta. You know, you, you have to. Don't come in there as a 35-year-old into the police station and you, there's a 28-year-old that has a rank above you and feel that you can say something uh, misdemeaning to the person. Then we have a second level of leadership, which ooh, um, position, position leadership. I have something that you need. That's why you have to follow me. Third level, position, permission, leadership. Um, you must ask my permission uh, in that. So there's like a factory where there's a supervisor. Can I go to the toilet quickly? Now again, I feel that teachers function in that permission leadership um, realm. You know, you have to ask me for everything. And yes, you can't have a learner-centric um, academia classroom. However, people have opinions, you know, and people say things. So the worst one is permission. I... Don't like that. I function in the next one, or I feel I function in the next one, is transformational leadership. People follow you because you add value to them. Now, the word follow is not, I'm telling you, jump, say how high. The word is follow in terms of, yeah, maybe following you on Insta, but also maybe following and understanding like, nah, this, what's coming out of this guy's mouth, let me listen to what is worth for me and not eradicate everything. Because that's what we do. And this is what I want to do. Just bring value. When someone comes on and says, right, we bring value. I have asked a, a few guests to come on and I don't want to tell this story. So they're like, brah, the questions you send, I need two weeks to prepare for this. I'm like, bro, that looks so when you come, you're going to share value. And the top level of leadership, it's called pinnacle leadership. That's your Nelson Mandela's, your um, Martin Luther King. That's like, you know, he talk last. We all follow. He don't even need to say anything. We just move his head and then we follow. I think the ultimate, and then the, again, John C. Maxwell says this, um, I asked him, what's the most important law of leadership? So he always goes, guy came up to him, ask him, John, you heard all these laws of leadership. What's the most important law of leadership? And he's like, oh, I don't want to tell you because you're not going to believe it. It's the same like he says where I get my advice. And then he goes, yeah, I don't know. simple. Who you surround yourself with pauses for dramatic effect. How? Why? And then he says, you know who led like that? Jesus. Simple. And you know, Jesus went to the easiest one. He didn't still have to put a long paragraph of why you must follow him. He just went, follow me. Let's go. And they went. Because he had a, he, he, he pinnacled, he transformed people and he led relentlessly. I greeting Simeon, and then we have Auntie Sandy, the mother in law, and then Starlight478, whoever you are, I'm giving you a shout out. So, uh, you see, the people are learning now in Antel in South Africa, they're commenting now. Thank you, man, and don't forget to like and subscribe. That's, what the, that's how they support each other. Use some bang to comment because someone's going to see you comment. You some don't want to subscribe. Could we say, why are you subscribe to YouTube? You must do that. I met someone in the weekend, said I saw you on TV. I was like, you watch YouTube, but I'm taking it. It was freak funny, but it's all right. Ladies and gentlemen, we, you know we fall behind. Also this name until I find out in the week. We're the rudest country in the comment section. Nantel's like, wow, what? Yes. We are the most umboskofta, rudest, like we have the most hate in our comment section in the world. Official, uh, official, official, official. official brother, Scott, you can go, you can go check there. Or like, oh, you know, my phone's dead. But I mean, I think it was official, South Africa, in the comments, 
like the most hated on social media. But don't you think it's, uh, it's because of because of uh, TikTok? What do you what do you want me to say because of TikTok? I'm not get, give me give me give me give me give me more no, context. It, it never used to be this bad, man. The toxic the toxicity. That's a, that's a nice one. I like that. The toxicity. Um, I think uh, no 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 no. We didn't have old toilet in it. But it wasn't so. Ah. I hear you, but that was more exposing. But I, I don't know. More exposing. People was exposing you. Means that people afraid of it. Okay, but I mean, we created a little thing where we just felt like outsing everybody. Like really, we bad. We don't. We don't collab. We don't support. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, let's just stay. <laughs> Rudest country in the comments. Please, people. And then there's other shows on Cape Conscious Media. Please check them out. Love them. We actually had one of our parents on here. He has a stand up comedy on Sunday night. It's very good. Shout out to you. Put you more pressure there. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, check it out. This uh, platform um, does so much. Sean, Sean, yo. Sean, Sean, hey there, Fagan. Just toned in now and hoping for a good live this evening and how is your evening going hope what you share could change the way i see things in life my word talk about pressure <laughs> yo i just came on to share a bit of value you must saying i must change your life and still sean sean it's so nice you had to say it twice <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen and back to where we were nantal please this people is taking all our time up here eh? greetings uh simeon my friend my brother so again, and back to where we are. I'm by the 15 invaluable laws of growth. Why I'm saying this to you guys is because one of the best words in the language is potential. Everybody has most potential. It get potential. Potential, potential. So potential usually means that someone that has optimism. So now you must ask yourself, if someone's ever told you you've got potential, please ask yourself if you have those five traits. And I'll probably only get through the first invaluable law of growth i love john c maxwell star invaluable like don't it's priceless vibes um so you have optimism hope hope is an acronym for helping others pursue excellence or helping others um pursue expertise that's hope and then success like if you thrive on success you know you don't shy away from them um fulfillment Performance can be a range of things, right? Just completion is maybe a good, better word for us. Uh, if you complete things, that brings fulfillment. And then the last one is greatness. Now people's like, Man, bro, greatness is just something they throw around on a meme. Like, ladies and gentlemen, there is greatness within you. Like that you've heard before. Um, and I'm speaking to, to, to the change makers, you know, for everybody sitting there at home, for that, that lady that's hustling there on the side, selling something that's like, nah, I've got some greatness in me. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so far behind the world. We don't even, you know, we are so far behind e-commerce. We are so far behind delivery. We need to get on the bandwagon. Before an American company, oh, you're one before a foreign company comes and says, let us do it here in South Africa. Keep the side hustles going, ladies and gentlemen. Support each other. So potential is a word based on possibilities please understand that so when someone is fulfilling their potential we know it we can see it we like it we like to say it all the time yo you bright you buzzing lovely so how do you get your potential now they're like you but you didn't say that i have it no how do you get your potential because there's always the story of the talents musna the talents I love that story about the talents. Talents was actually money, but um, I think it really like talents, like your, your natural talents that you were given by the Lord. Um, so you know they always give that one day you're going to stand and have to answer the Lord about what you did with your talents. So this is how you grow into your talents or your potential. Right, let's do going very biblical this evening, eh? So uh, this can be done by growing. And now the word I'm going to take you through this evening is intentional. Intentional growth. So, like when myself and Nantel spoke, like he knows this has to be intentional. The content has to be intentional for some growth. It's not me just popping up here. I've again got all the books in studio. You know they're going to pop up. Here's the one that started the business. Um, and this one here, obviously. So, this is growing potential. All right. Uh, Nantel, can you just jump up? That's why I'm phrasing there because my eye has to go there for the next thing. Um, just a bit further, I'm going to take them there where we can, no, 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 up, 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 no, 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 no. This is my end doing your thing, or do your thing go the other way? 
All right, there we go. That's fine, Antel. Thank you. So, John C. Maxwell, what he does is he creates laws. All right, so 15 invaluable laws of growth, 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. Now, what are laws? First of all, the country makes most laws. Um, so, the like somebody again, and, and again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sharing these things because we don't take the time out to go watch these things. Like I've sat and watched that whole four hour, fall asleep, wake up, but then there's just that time when you just start taking and taking and taking. So he explains that why he calls it laws is because how are laws created, right? By people. However, when you, there's always a consequence for the law. So this is what, in a nutshell, what a law is. You are free to make all the choices in you want to make, but you are not free of the consequences. Pauses for dramatic effect. That's, so that's why it's, it's laws. You make the choice to abide or to install the law in your practice, in your life, in your, and just like start using them um, and see the growth. Or don't use them and be still. So uh, a friend of mine contrary, he's like, Fagan, what you're talking about tonight, please? Because I told him, brah, I'm, I'm there this night. He's like, I'm tuning in. What is it tonight? I'm about leaving your comfort zone. He's like, yo, that sounds simple because nothing grows there. It's like, oh, that's one. That, that's, the, that's, the, that's the gem there. Nothing grows there. Now I'm about growth. I said it last week and I say it again. This podcast is not about me being right or wrong. If I'm right, I am right. If I'm wrong, I am wrong. But I prefer to grow. Then I'm good. So let's stick there. So the first law is called the law of intentionality. Boom. So this law proves that growth doesn't just happen. Your people don't like this. And I, I, prop some, I sit a whole session on this. Growth doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. Most people spend, okay, let's go. Goals and aspirations don't just happen. Only an excellent version of you can make things happen in anything. When you do your best, don't you get your best? If you, don't, if you do half of your best, then you get half of your best. You've never walked into a test, if you did, knowing absolutely nothing and then passing. And if you do, you're lying. You, that's a myth that day you concentrated, you consumed all. But you did take the time out to go learn the test. So most people spend their whole adult life believing that everything just improves over time. Last week I spell, I spell, I said that to a child, love is spelt T-I-M-E, time. So most people think that things just grow over time. Like your child, no, he's just going to grow over time. He's just going to get better over time. No, common sense is not common practice. I actually said that today also. People need to be taught, please and thank you, at the age of 18, 19. Wash your hands before you leave. Common sense is not common practice. So don't believe that things just improve over time. And we will say things like, oh, in the last two years, like really, in the last two years? In the last two years actually improved so much. Like, come on, man. Like be harder, you got to, don't beat yourself up. But be hard on yourself with the things that matter. You wanna create purpose-driven people, right? Mission, mission, you find it, you go at it. So they believe that they will get better at life or at, at all. Listen to this one. People believe they will be, get better at life and most people believe that they will get better at 40. What do they always say? Life begins at 40. And then when they reach 40, nothing has changed. Ladies and gentlemen, I obviously read through the book with my uh, business partner, Chad Leonard, and we have summarized the whole book, so the notes I'm getting to the left. So just to give you that. So again, 40 years later, nothing has improved. Now these misconceptions I want to get out. Like I want us to intentionally want to improve. Like everybody, the, I think I was on a, the 102 views and to the 58 people that didn't even like or comment because jealous bang. Please man, if the 150 for us can prove, because I know I have parents that listen in with my kids. So uh, I've got absolutely nothing to hide. So let's go. These misconceptions as to why people don't advance in life 
have been identified and I'm going to list them for you. So the first one, we're going to speak about different gaps that people find themselves in. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, the first and beautiful one is called the assumption gap. You've heard this argument many a time in Premi Piatti. Don't make assumptions that I was going to order you a pasta when you normally order a burger. And then you see the argument full out. Don't make assumptions carrying well into adulthood the misguided belief that you will automatically grow. So parents don't assume that and parents don't assume that of yourself. Like I never thought I'd be at the stage where I go, I'm not going out tonight. I don't even smart. Yo, oh, I don't like I have no list for a party. Like I don't even, I don't know. Like my alcohol level is, I'm bad. And I was a binger in my uh, university days, carrying Fagan in. Ladies and gentlemen, ooh, wh like one beer, I'm good to go. Like I'm, I can't believe, I think my spiritual self is very strong, but yo. So it's changed over time, right? So automatically, I didn't grow automatically. It's because I took, and I changed my environment. I don't go into the liquor store, not because I don't, not don't want to buy something, I'm going to buy a Coke. But why put yourself in a situation to have that there if I wanted to change that? And it's not, a, no, and again, I didn't do what everybody else do. <sighs> Tuck bubbles, I'm not drinking anymore, I'm not drinking anymore. No, no, I have a beer. So what? I have preference though. That's a gem for everybody out there, preference. All you fools, my soccer people and my sports people and my people. I promise you, you want to wean yourself off drinking or drink less? Just have preference. Yo, worked for me like a bomb when I was, because you wanted to avoid people, right? University, getting to that stage, like older, like nah, 26. I think when my, when my, my mom also, and then, you know, I had to get more serious in life and I was like, nah, this drinking thing must stop. So I walk into a place and they're like, is there Jamie? And they must know there's no Jamie. Is that them that Owen's still putting by? Is there Jamie? No. Okay, I'm not drinking. And then they're like, yo, you want to keep you that Owens? I have preference. So, like stepping into up, and you know, guys, some people just walk in like, what is there to drink? That was me. But I knew I had to do something intentional to get off that. So we don't improve by simply existing. Chaistana. This is like, this was Chad Leonard's example. Like, this is a harsh one. Like, he, he, like the guy on the street. So again, with assumption, people assume that experience is a good teacher. I do not believe a word of that. Don't come tell me as an ex-professional, I played here, I played there. What are you adding to the game? Nah, like now, because the game is infinite. I also played. I also played professional. Beautiful. I made your Caleb Hansen was standing in the, Caleb in the polls and I tell him, I just needed to listen to me because I didn't play professional long, like three years but I played with professionals that played long. Yo, massive. I ran away from him. I'm like, thank you for that quote. I'm dropping that tonight. Because I've played with consummate professionals, like, mm, like you Nassif. Ooh. Then in that same season, I get John Pencil, Canadian captain, running there 40 minutes after training still. Can't believe you've trained so little here in South Africa. No, this is the medicine. We run here. So, Ladies and gentlemen, you have to be intentional about growing. So I'm not going to take you through how, but I'm giving you the point of departure. Next up, the knowledge gap. Now the knowledge gap, we as our people, color, this is also black colored people, all of us in the Cape Flats, we stuck in the knowledge gap. I don't know how to grow. Pauses, okay, new little pauses for dramatic effect tonight. You don't know how to, so you're looking for the, the book, the motivation, like somebody, like you. So again, you don't know how, speak to someone. If you, the first thing you need to do is set a goal. If you want to be clear on what you want, the world responds with clarity. Chad Leonard, for your notes is eh. So again, I fraud. Ticket from United in Valencia. I don't know why this one I come with. But anyway, um, if you are clear with what you want, like I said, I will show you here. Established July 2020, life academic and sports tutoring. That's how it started in the brain. 
write out the whole business plan, the company's going to be like this, benefits, profiles, goal setting, tutoring, conflict management, stress, yours, I'm going to do all this, become an agent for change, training, listen to this, in training, there is no winning or losing, only learning. <laughs> yo, yo, I write the clone gems in his books. And that would have been my emblem, like a box, and then tutoring outside the box, because we do tutoring outside the box. So again, what did I say there? I said, when you are clear, <laughs> I was freaking clear about my dream, the world responds with clarity. That's my word, no, my word for 2023 is accuracy. But I think we, we you need, like, look at our, like, take a word, go with clarity. Like, clarity is most clear, like, you want to be clear about what you want to do. So you have to be intentional about it. Like I don't like that people don't write things down eh, and that people also think it's not a, like a bad stigma about it. Like walking around with a dictionary, writing things down in a dictionary, with a, a journal or a diary. Um, yeah, so then there's a, a, a little poem from Loretta Staples that says, uh, let's wait for Nan to pop it up again. Very important. It says, uh, many people learn only from the school of hard knocks. Painful experiences teach them along the way. So life lessons make people change, sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worse. So we are not eradicating that things do happen. I'm not here on a, uh, you just need to be positive. Because I also, also believe that some people listen to me and then they walk out the door and they're like, yeah, this man just gave all this value and I must go back into my house. I'm not happy, but I'm inspired. So I'm just an inspired, unhappy bra. Nah. That's why we're doing intentional growth. Like you need to be literally intentional about it. Like you need to say to people, like I'm going to be intentional about this. Mom, dad, child, we're going to change how we are. We're going to be intentional. Like but use that word tomorrow. I'm going to intentionally eat. Yes. The amount of people that are here is like, yo, I didn't eat today. Like you, like be that person that doesn't skip. Because I do that also. So you decide when you need to grow. You choose what you need to learn. You follow what you feel is discipline. And then you go at your own pace. So again, did you hear that again? You choose what you want to learn. You set the goals. You. What do we do? We don't block out the noise of the world. Somebody says, and I've, I'm a massive victim of that, eh? Shout out to my, my, my blue sign people, my you should be here people, like your world ventures when I signed up with that. Like people was like, yo, I've never ex experienced so many people just knocking you down and saying something's not going to work. Ah, you say it didn't work. However, people, a lot of people benefited from it. It taught me about affiliate marketing, multimedia market, marketing. Um, not the pyramid scheme that I just showed now, but I also went on a dream trip. And then that was it. Because most people go to Thailand, like they don't five-star hotel and spec. So, shout out still. And again, that was us getting to the point of being intentional. We decided to do it, right? You need to do it. And again, one of my favorite uh, uh, lines is, this sounds like a you problem. Yo, yeah, he did it in chat, drop me with that. So again, and we moved, to the, I think we moved past the uh, assumption gap. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Nantel. We are about the knowledge gap of our people. And uh, again, no knowledge, is not because you went to the, we learn from the school of hard knocks. I'm more impressed with the guy who fixes my TV. Yo, potent, nah, next level, next level. My TV had a mad thing. The screen was blue, like egg blue. I take it to this guy, recommended by someone. Yo, like just give me explaining to me, is he Manenberg, just explaining to me the intrinsic things that go on in the TV. That one someone put an extra fan in the TV. So when it starts in the morning, it hits you with a z -z 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 -z. But then it's gone, but the TV works. I wait to replace the lights. Yeah, I'm listening to this man. He's like, yo, you say Volsum of my Leicester. I'm like, because I'm in the presence of an expert, a TV expert, not from the, from the university, but from the school of art knocks. Yo, you must appreciate those that have handyman skills. That is the, and that's a map. I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, the handyman, don't, don't, the handyman, don't, the handyman, all you need is good marketing. I promise you, your business is going to boom. It's a, it's a boomer. Like they were speaking about the next business to boom the handyman. People don't do, they're going to phone you. People are getting lazier. Like you don't, I almost, I almost want to DIY still at home. Oh, keep me sick of laughing there now. I have, my, I have a draw. Um, 
I have a saw thing. I have a, I have a light. And I have a pair of screws there, screwdrivers also and things, you know. So uh, that's my DIY spec. But uh, I'm there and there about. But the DIY man, please, you just need to be marketed properly. I believe in you. Um, Nantel, thank you for that one. That's a beautiful one. Move up, policy. Uh, and then, ooh, Nantel, my favorite one. Tell me. Let's us talk about this one, man. The timing gap. This one says, when most, how much times have you heard this line? It's not the right time. When, when is the right time? Yo, 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 yo. When is it ever? Most people don't act as quickly as they should on things. Like you've witnessed it probably. You've seen it. Tell me about leaving your, the comfort mm. of the industry. I, the first thing that comes to mind, um, a guy told me, no, no, we're not ready yet. We're not ready yet to launch whatever it was. I know what it was, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, we were three of us. And then the one guy said, dude, we're doing this whether, you, whether you're with us or not. Mm. But they, we're not going to wait anymore. Correct. We're just going to do And we jumped in and we did it. And it's, it's moments like these, and this is why this stuff is important. It's like these things happen, ladies and gentlemen. It's documented. It's normal. We understand. We can move past it. And that guy who said, told Nantel, it's not time. It's never the right time, bro. Do you know what is one of the most undervalued skills? Starting when you're not ready. We started this blast. We wrote it down. And me and Kim came into January. And we were like, Fagan, let's just do this thing, man. Let's see. We're going to get 10 children. Let's try it out. This is the model. Blah, blah, blah. We're in this area, target market. We can get so much. We do this. There's how much we need. Blah, 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 blah. We start. We're like, Ish, we're going to do it in our house. In the house, boom, get this, get this. Every, every month, every week, it was something extra. Every week. Now we're at the point of 30 kids, um, kids on the waiting list. And somebody told me earlier in the week, they're like, nah, and the people must be desperate to come to you. And I'm telling you now, that bra and everybody else, the main answer is not desperate, brother. They are saying, my kids are coming to you, bra. I was like, Jim. So it's a big difference. Now, when you're desperate with your child, you, you know, they say, bah, what do you mean there? So people are not desperate. People are now, and I said it, they want to invest in education and in the child. Very important. So we spoke about the, the timing gap, right? Most people don't act as soon as they could. Now, you know, it's the worst when you see someone with potential. This is why we speak about potential. And you're like, brah, you must do it now. Leave now. Start now. Do this now. It's, it's, it's a really a tough thing. If you, maybe, maybe if you could have told that, brah, like you're stuck in the time gap, brah. That's where you're stuck. And you're going to be stuck long in there. And tomorrow's but, promise to no man. Tomorrow is promised to no one. It's like that. Now again, the people just think it's memes. I'm telling you, like all these little, um, if you don't set goals, you must hit the target every time. People think it's just memes or, or, or positive sayings from Andrew Carnegie. Like, then I ask you, do you know who's that? Like somebody sent me a, a thing from Ray Kroc, like don't give up something. And I'm like, do you know who's Ray Kroc? And I'm like, yeah, that's the, he's like, no. I'm like, that's the bro who started McDonald's. It's like, yo. I'm like, yeah, so what else? Go read more about him. See that that man journaled every day. Yeah. So you have to, and look, ladies and gentlemen, Fagan Muller. Apparently the guy that, that owns it is the, he owns the most um, real estate, one of the, the biggest real estate uh, owners in the world. And that's how they operate. They in America, they are, they are the uh, syndicate. All that, the, the Rothschilds and the, they're the, the money for jam, man. They control the world, man. The least we can do is control our mindset. Mm. You know, we can at least be positive and understand that everything that you will get is everything. Yo, I must get Darren of Alcabulin. Nah, bra, if you can get to reach out to me, this bra slut was a potent thing on Instagram yesterday. The crazy, the worst thing we were taught is scarcity. <gasps> Yo, Nantel, it was, it hit me so hard and I'll give it to you guys also, but you must go check him out. The worst thing we were taught about scarcity Yes, they teach us about scarcity, then they teach us about supply and demand. Now they tell us the supply is low, so the demand is high. Hmm. Da, 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 da. Can't we have a lot of stuff. Our minerals, they're holding the diamonds. And they say, okay, release so but they keep the money up. But this is a mindset. So I'm using that as an example, but we have a scarcity mindset in South Africa. So yeah, they even do it in front of us, people. Yeah, I'm answering my own question. Why? We always say, how do the puppies open up? Boom, 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 next to my car. They don't believe in the scarcity mindset. 
There's over enough for everybody to go around. Boom. Don't come into a scarcity mindset. You must change it. Now again, you can must think, okay, I'm not teaching economics tomorrow. The kids have a marathon day of maths. But I think next week, Wednesday, they got economics. You can must know I'm going to teach them about scarcity. Yo, 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 what a principle. There is no such thing as scarcity. Create in abundance. There should be 10 CCMs running. And then there's over enough. We all so much just send each other. Don't forget to solo follow CCM2 and this one there. And we all love each other. We need to boost so that one day Joe Rogan and the message is like, hey, bruh, there's a CCM in South Africa that's booming because there's, there's the other one that also sent in the South African podcast industry is booming because they're supporting each other. So very important that we stay there. So again, in the time gap, finally, they says they find themselves subject to the law of diminishing intent. Now, and I'm taking out there. The law of diminishing intent, listen to it. Diminishing intent is your... So uh, let's go for the word diminishing, to stop, right? To diminish something and then intent, intentionality. So the law of diminishing intent is when you stop being intentional about something. That usually happens when you don't get the reward in the time that you wanted it. Because remember, you like to see the world through your eyes. You must realize the realize that your eyes are realizing. It's got that same YX line there or something. So uh, very important is that that's when people's, you know, you can go like, Fagan, I'm going to implement the stuff now. Kaboom, one week, you, nothing changes. Everybody's still scaling at you. You still da 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 It don't happen overnight. It doesn't even happen over a week or a month. Like, you just got to stick to it. It is an ever-ending process. Never-ending. Like, you got to live every day. It doesn't just exist. So it's got to be intentional. Like, you wake up with that intention of, I'm going to kids now. I need to change the mindset there. When I leave... I have to find, but still the kids, I need to liaise and network with people that want to, that's part of my just cause, changing the landscape of education and football in South Africa. And if you have a just cause, you can take anybody along. I don't want to win. I want to evolve the mind. So mental can also do it with me. Somebody else, anybody can do it with me. You at home can help me. So that's my just cause. I don't want to be the best. Blast must never be the best school in the country. It must be a, a part that evolved the education of the country. Why do we do that? Because as we know, everybody that comes out of the teacher's hands goes on to do something significant, like the doctor. And the doctor come, can't come out of the hands of somebody they don't know. Yo, so my twice we're switching off. All right. So we're now at the, oh, sorry, at the mistake cap. Oh, ladies. And gentlemen, this is when you start a new. I'm afraid of making mistakes. You know, I love this because I'm around kids all the time. So I see them in their intent. Like, you must know we hated failing. We don't like failing. You know, we were taught that failing is wrong. You fail, you fail. You're dumb. You finish. Fail means first attempt in learning. Acronym king, but I know it's an oldie. If you want to grow, you need to get over any fears of having, making mistakes. You need to get over your fears. So... Yeah, no, Sage, you're getting another quote. Danger is real, fear is a choice. That's an egg one. Danger is real, fear is a choice. Fear is a perception of something, right? So people get anxiety attacks and panic attacks because of fear, right? Of perceived threat, right? So very important that you choose your fears. Now, yes, anxiety and panic attacks and mental health, these are all real, but we still choose our fears. How do we get over it? By acknowledging them first of all, and then we address them. Two, like I got two columns, like, is it real? Is it not real? Can I control it? Can I not control it? And then we work on coping mechanisms, right? Because when you tell people to deal with things, then it's like a daily thing. Like for me, deal is a very, very strong word. Verb also. I like coping. It's got a little uh, past participle on there and it sounds just uh, very more simple than deal. Um, and then growing means admitting that sometimes you don't have the answers. This is potent, Yara. And, and someone with a mouth that don't stop, the best time is to admit that you don't have the answers. The best time is also when you're arguing with your, not arguing, when you're having a debate with your wife and then you win. So that's also when you see how growing happens. Because sometimes people must admit that they don't have the answers. I smile because it really happens. But I, I was, yeah, everyone in the week, yeah, take that column. 
and that's important because most of the time I have to go like, you're oh, bad. Like I'm going to give this to everybody and I'm saying it now. You can't multitask. You need focused attention on things. I said it, I clip it even. It requires making mistakes even every day, even every day and a likely sign of moving in the right direction. If you're making mistakes, how mad is that? We are not taught this. And if you love it, you'll see your growth in there. So I'm gonna hit you with the last one as we end off. It's called the perfection gap. I have to find the best way to do it. Isn't that so? I have to find the best way to start. Now, I have never ever seen someone thrown in the pool and swim immediately. Yes, there is clips of it, that's why there's clips. We throw them there for a minute. And you see how they light it around. Or not, it was a dark. Like he goes, you can't, you're falling off the bike. Please accept that. So similar to the mistake gap, the desire to find the best way to start hampers growth. And that's the problem. You can't want to be the best. Yes, in, in the finite game, in a league run, in a 90 minutes, in a tennis game, you can be the best in that game. But when the game is done, there's growth to be happened. When it's done, you must keep on training. It was another game and another game. Roger, think about Raj. Roger Federer. That man, no, he didn't want to be the best. He just kept on going and kept on going. And now Rafael Nadal took over and he's happy. He was the best on the time. It's just part of the business. So the only way to start, ladies and gentlemen, Vusi Temba Kwayo, rule number one, just start. That's how I teach my kids with writing. And very important to all the teachers out there is that just let the children write. Throw spelling out the window, throw everything out the window, especially when they get into high school and you find loads of gaps in the learning. Now they're so afraid to put a pen to paper because they're already afraid of spelling. So I just let them write. And then I tell them, put on Google Lens and it edits everything for you. And then somebody's like, how can you let them use that? And I'm like, hey, because it's there, it makes work easier for me. And they become better. Now I have, oh, I can't wait to show you my progress of my one student I have who had a little bit of writing, slight dyslexia. Psh, I have actually two. Yo, I'll show you soon. Um, so someone has never driven a car before with no preparation and started to drive well. <coughs> so you only learn through experience. And the car definition is the best definition of them all. You only learn through pop proper experience with your car. <coughs> Apologies, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, the inspiration gap. Now, I am not here to inspire you, but this is where we are. I don't feel like doing it, mommy. I need to be inspired. I need to watch a video first. I need to see. Motivation does not start anything. It comes with progress and the results. That's what motivates you. <coughs> I've seen teams get demotivated because of a result. So again, cue, response, craving, reward. You don't get the reward, you don't get the motivation. Please understand that. <coughs> Apologies again. So finally, ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude the intentional laws, and only the first one, the law of intentionality, you must make the transition to intentional growth. Pauses for dramatic effect. I'm gonna end off by giving you guys the segment. I gave you lots of tips of the week. A young anecdote from the field I gave you. Actually, I do mean like knock it there. Which was Coach Jiga's um, little re -indition. That's also our behind the scenes. <coughs> the Q&A with the coach I had was also about how we speak, how players speak. And it's just in generally the language that we all use. Because we swear, um, Players respond, some players don't. It's important to understand communication, sender and receiver. So I'm going to end this evening on the book and the documentary. Oh, beautiful timing. So the way you think is the way you perform. <coughs> Finally, the first principle is you are what you are and where you are because of what has gone into your mind. And you can change what you are and where you are by changing what goes on in your mind. In other words, you are thinking directly affects your performance. Talking about your performance, several years ago, I agreed to buy a computer. Okay, I'm not going to go through his whole uh, re edition <coughs> Ooh, little frog here in the throat. So ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for an hour of value. 
and uh, a massive respect to everybody that tuned in and obviously shared there. Please like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the show. Just an hour. You'll have me more sooner because Nantel's calling me out. And uh, thank you for the progress of CCM. And without further ado, I'll see you next week.